Welcome to BW Business World. Today I have with me Professor John Dewar, Chair of Universities Australia and Vice Chancellor and President of La Trobe University, also from Australia. Thank you so much for joining me today, Professor. So I want to start by asking you, because you are here, of course, to um, strengthen relationships with India. Why is it so important for you to have this international relationship? And what has Australia kind of done in the past to kind of strengthen this? So maybe I could begin by setting the wider context for the relationship between Australia and India. I've been traveling to India now for well over 20 years, uh, visiting universities, building partnerships, but I don't think there has ever been a point in those two decades where I felt as excited as I do now about the potential for the growth in relationships between India and Australia through education. So with the national education policy and the recent signing of the free trade agreement between India and Australia, I think we're on the brink of a really historic period of deepening and growth in the relationship between the two countries through education. So I think one reason why it's important is because it is such a big part of the bilateral relationship between our two countries. Australia and India because there are many things that unite us but one of the things that really powerfully binds us together is a profound belief in the importance and the transformational effects of education for our young people and I think the policy the new national education policy the free trade agreement are really going to turbocharge relations between the two countries in in those respects. So I think at a very general level, the, a big picture level, if you like, that's why this is so important. I think it's now more important than it's ever been between our two great nations. I think there are lots of other reasons why internationalization has always been important to Australia. Um, it's important for our students uh, that they are exposed to different cultures to different ways of thinking, different ways of solving problems, because increasingly our students will find themselves working in very multicultural workplaces, especially in Australia, which as you know, uh, has a long history of waves of migration from different parts of the world, from Europe, uh, from Asia, from South Asia. Uh, so our graduates, wherever they come from, whatever their cultural backgrounds, will increasingly find themselves working in very multicultural environments. And for international students who come to Australia, they will find the same thing. They will find that when they go home, if they do, or if they stay in Australia, if they choose to, that they will need those cross-cultural skills. And studying in classrooms or uh, laboratories, in practical classes with students from a variety of cultures is very educational in and of itself and very enriching, I think, for the students. But it doesn't stop there. There are many areas of research where collaboration is the only, really the only way in which some of the big global challenges we face can be properly tackled. Um, take COVID, for example, just a you know, random recent example. But the development of the COVID vaccines uh, really required almost unprecedented collaboration between universities and research institutes as well as the, the big pharmaceutical companies around the world. And scientists in different parts of the world contributed different elements to the solution that eventually led to the very successful vaccines, I mean incredibly successful vaccines that uh, we've seen in the last couple of years. So that's one example of why internationalization of research collaboration is so important. But if we come back to the India-Australia relationship again, one of the ambitions of the national education policy is to build the capacity of India's own institutions and to achieve that 50% target, very ambitious target, astonishingly uh, ambitious target, but one that's achievable, but will only be achievable through the friendship and collaboration of nations like Australia who can contribute to the capacity building and the capacity provision um, for 
uh, 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 India to meet that 50% target. So I could go on a very long time about this, but this is so important for both countries and for research, for global research, addressing global problems, um, and for individual universities and the students who study in them. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for summarizing that so well. And you're right, there's so many benefits of internationalization, but um, these are the core ones that you are focusing on now, and thank you for sharing that with us. Now, I do want to ask, you know, it, it has been a common practice for universities to try to attract foreign students, and, uh, you know, that was definitely the trend beforehand, and now what we're seeing more of is, like, like you mentioned, these collaborations of universities working with each other and working on, on these exchange programs for students and for, you know, faculty even. So. Now that you have sort of embarked on these collaborations, what are you hoping to aim in the long run? Well, we have a number of existing collaborations with Indian universities and IITs, uh, which are very exciting and they uh, are helping us to achieve all of the objectives that I described earlier. Um, you're right that historically the relationship between India and Aus Australia has been largely defined by the number of Indian students traveling to Australia to study. But I think what we're seeing now is a complete transformation of that pattern. Uh, we're seeing Australian institutions like mine really keen to develop research collaborations, to run joint PhD programs, um, to run more activities in country, in India, um, whether they're joint programs, uh, pathway programs, one plus two or two plus one or whatever it is, the, the range of uh, opportunities now open to us to collaborate and to do things together, I think, is unprecedented. Um, so what are, what are our ambitions? We want to be recognised as one of Australia's leading universities uh, and for the contribution we can make to the Indian higher education system um, and to help the Indian government and the Indian nation achieve those very ambitious aspirations in the national education policy. So we're, we're pursuing this in a number of different ways. We have many existing partnerships ranging from uh, IIT Kanpur, for example, where we run a lot of joint research projects um, all the way through to Amity University here in, in, in Noida in Delhi, uh, with whom we have very deep long-standing partnerships. So we, we're really excited about what lies ahead of us. Uh, and the potential for this relationship. Absolutely, and I can imagine that there's a lot of like work and preparation that has kind of gone into sort of making sh before you even got to the stage of like signing these um, um, agreements. Yes. Uh, so, can you share a little bit about what kind of policies and arrangements you have in place right now in Australian universities? Yes. So, we have had a presence here in Delhi for many years, um, and it's a sign of our commitment to the relationship that. Our office here in Delhi now has more than 20 staff. It's uh, a big operation in and of its own right. And that's been a really important bridge for us from our home in Melbourne uh, into India. Um, the team here do a lot of work to support the collaborations we have with universities and IITs. Um, they do a lot of work to support our engagement with industry partners like Infosys, for example, with whom we do a lot of work in the area of smart cities research. Um, so we've, we've put in place a number of different strategies and we've made a number of different investments over, the, over many years that have supported uh, this partnership. And I think the important thing, certainly from a Latrobe point of view, is that this hasn't happened overnight. You know, we have had deep partnerships here in India for over 25 years. So we have a collaboration with Lady Sri Ram College as part of the University of Delhi, for example, um, which is one of the longest standing academic partnerships between an Australian university and an Indian academic institution um, that there is. It's been extraordinary. Um, so this is not an overnight success, if you like. It's been the result of many years of building relationships, careful planning, making the right investments. Um, and I'm delighted to say that La Trobe is very popular as a place to come and study um, with, with Indian students. We've also developed uh, some very good relationships with some of your cultural icons. 
So Shah Rukh Khan, for example, um, is a very generous sponsor of a PhD scholarship that um, at his request we offer to young Indian women who want to come and do a PhD at our university. Um, the, the first recipient of that scholarship um, came to us to study uh, honeybees, which is actually of global significance. The work she is doing in her PhD um, will help the, the world stave off pests that affect honeybee populations. That's a big issue in Australia at the moment where a lot of honeybees are dying because of this, um, this virus that's infected um, beehives. Um, and the next scholarship has just been opened. So anyone who's interested in coming to La Trobe to do a PhD um, on the Shah Rukh Khan scholarship, it's an incredibly generous scholarship. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of different ways in which we're reaching out um, to India directly or through our team here um, to build those, those relationships. Yeah. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the expansion of your offices in India and um, absolutely save the bees. We need them. I think we've all seen the <laughs> documentaries by now. Um, so thank you for sharing that with us. Um, so I just, I did want to ask, you know, um, through these MOUs, like what kind of benefits um, can Indian students or even yeah. staff expect as opposed to say like going into a full-time program as a foreign student to a yes. university in Australia? Yeah, so there are lots. Um, so student mobility. So students can come to La Trobe um, for a short period of time, not for a whole degree. They can come for a short period of time, uh, learn alongside Australian and other students from around the world. We take students from 120 countries from around the world. Gain that cultural experience, taste another culture, maybe go and see some sport in Melbourne, possibly cricket, who knows, um, and then come back. Now, the challenge there is at the moment, it's very difficult for those students to obtain credit towards their Indian degree based on the study they do in Australia. I'm hoping um, that following the uh, Free Trade Agreement, or ECTA, that was signed earlier this year between the Australian and Indian governments, that it will become much easier for Indian students to spend a semester in an Australian university and then come home with credit for their Australian studies. So I think we're, we're sort of preparing ourselves for that possibility, or likelihood actually, um, so that there will be real tangible benefits to Indian students. Uh, PhD students, um, we're, we've developed a number of joint PhD programs with Indian universities and with IITs um, so that PhD students can study in India but benefit from supervision from Australian academics and perhaps spend part of their PhD uh, period in Australia working in an Australian facility or laboratory. So those are some of the benefits that would accrue to Indian students. Um, for Indian staff exchanges, staff exchanges, uh, opportunities to come and learn from how we run our organisations, um, which is really part of that capacity building. And PhD students, for example, um, who are studying uh, under one of our joint arrangements with an Indian university or with an IIT can benefit from uh, being able to study and do their research in India. They won't have to relocate or to travel, but will have the benefit of an Australian supervisor contributing their expertise and their knowledge. And if it becomes relevant, they'll be able to spend a bit of time um, at La Trobe working in a laboratory or using the equipment. Um, so they really get the best of both worlds. Um, and then for staff, uh, there's the opportunity to, uh, for staff exchange, for exchange of ideas, um, which is all part of that capacity building uh, endeavor that I referred to earlier, which is gonna be so important under the national education policy. Absolutely, and you have kind of touched upon this before, but just to um, get it in your own words, um, we've heard from about the benefits Indian students can get. What about the Australian students and staff? What benefits do you think they can get from these kinds of exchanges? So we want more Australian students to spend time here in India. And there's growing interest in doing that amongst Australian students. 
they recognize, as indeed the whole world recognizes, that India uh, is growing in its economy, um, it's growing in its global influence, um, and it's growing in its innovation capacity. It's becoming a very exciting place for new businesses to take hold um, and for new industries to flourish. So I think young Australians are now realizing that uh, there are many benefits to be gained from learning more about Indian society, Indian culture, and Indian languages. Um, we teach Hindi, for example, at La Trobe. We're one of only two universities that does teach Hindi. I know that there are many other languages other than Hindi here. Um, so we want to encourage more Australian students to take up that opportunity. There's a thing called the New Colombo Plan, uh, which is a government program that supports students either individually or in groups to come and experience more of an Asian country, uh, and India is certainly included in that. Um, some of them come and work with employers in the region, and there are some very big, very important employers here in India, of course. Um, so I think there are potentially many benefits for Australian students, as well as for Indian stu staff and students. Yeah, absolutely. And you earlier did mention about um, the credits for students not necessarily counting in India. And I think the NFP is, is putting in a lot of reforms to kind of yeah. um, make sure that we can have those collaborations and people can seamlessly move through yeah. um, different countries, different education systems, and still have a you know, cohesive education experience. Yeah. Um, so that being said, if you could tell us a little bit about how um, the education department at the Australian High Commission is working with the Association of um, Indian Universities to kind of work on NEP and you know, ensure that this internationalization and collaboration can occur. So at the moment, there's a task force that's been established between the Indian and Australian governments um, to develop a policy of mutual recognition um, of qualifications, which essentially means mutual recognition of degrees. Um, that task force, I think, has been given an end point by which they must uh, pro provide their recommendations. Um, I, I know some of the Australian members of that task force. They're very optimistic about the result of that process. Um, and last week, I, I met your Minister Pradhan and members of staff from his office. And I know one or two of the people from your government who are working on this. Um, so I'm really confident that there will be a very positive outcome. And I think that will be transformative. Um, it'll really open up enormous possibilities for both Australian and Indian students to study in each other's systems and to take back a deeper knowledge of the other country when, they've, when they go home. So I'm very optimistic that that will lead to a very productive conclusion. Um, there was a meeting of the um, Australia India Education Council last week with our Education Minister, Minister Clare, and your Education Minister and they agreed to establish an additional task force on transnational education. So um, that will look at uh, other forms of cross-border delivery, whether it's online or through increased student mobility, to really test the possibilities of what we can achieve together um, as, as two very friendly nations. So I'm, I'm really excited, actually, about, about the possibilities. That is exciting to hear about, and I'm really excited to see what happens next. I only have two more questions for you before I let you go. So one of them is, um, since you have been working on these collaborations for a while, do you have any stories for us, like from students, from staff, who have kind of been a part of this and their experiences? Um, yes, I do. Um, so I mentioned Lady Sri Ram College um, earlier, which is the, one of the longest standing relationships we've had in India. Um, Minakshi Gopinath used to be the principal of Lady Sri Ram, as you probably know. Um, she was a huge fan of the exchange, the student exchange relationship we had. And she would tell me often of the really life changing experience that it was for her students from Lady Sri Ram College coming to La Trobe. Um, and that's why she, when she was still the principal, was so committed to that relationship. 
Other examples include the joint PhD work that we're doing, um, particularly with IIT Kanpur. Um, we have a smart cities research initiative um, that we run in partnership with IIT Kanpur. Um, and those PhD students are doing really important work that will be of benefit not just to um, India, but potentially much, much more wide, widely than that, because the issues of traffic congestion, traffic pollution, um, and making better use of our transport infrastructure are almost universal. So the work that they're doing in collaboration with partners such as Infosys uh, will really have profound and lasting effects. My final question to you is, um, I, I was looking through your profile and you know you have also had the opportunity to like study in a lot of different countries. How do you think that experience kind of helped you or impacted you know, your, your current position right now? Well, I've been very lucky um, in that I've been able to visit many universities in many different parts of the world. And I've taught at universities in different parts of the world. Um, it's been incredibly educational. Um, because you get to see both the similarities and the differences between education sectors. Um, and one of the things that COVID taught me was that in the end, we're all struggling with the same challenges and we all have the same aspirations. Um, you know, higher education, universities around the world, what's always impressed me is just how committed presidents, vice-chancellors, whatever you call them, how committed they are to their institutions making a real difference. And the same would be true of education ministers who are responsible for the, for the sectors. Um, so, you know, in different, part, in different parts of the world, each institution is facing different challenges, but they've all got that singular mission to make a positive difference. Um, and that's been a real highlight for me of the, the opportunity to see that in operation uh, in other parts of the world. Thank you so much for sharing that with us and for joining me today in this discussion. I really look forward to hearing more about La Trobe and all the initiatives you are making and even maybe future collaborations. Thank you. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. Thank you very much.